right, so welcome. So right now, my name is Noelle Savoyan. I'm the Working Land Specialist. Thank you for being here. In the room with me, we also have uh, Emma Hansen. I am another Working Land Coordinator with Noelle. Perfect. And today we are tag teaming this presentation. Presentation. So a big thank you to our partners. If you are at any of our partner sites today, they have offered to host this webinar live. So um, if anyone wanted to get out and not watch from your office or home computer, you could do that. So the Springfield Regional Development Corporation, the Rutland Economic Development Corporation, the Wyndham County Economic Development Program, and the Northern Vermont Development Association are all helping us host today's webinar as well as Tuesday's webinar. So thank you very much. So the next five minutes, we'd like to play this great Working Lands video that we put together last fall, and it really demonstrates the success of the program. If you can't hear it that well, if you have any trouble with audio, don't worry. We are recording this, and we're also posting this uh, on the website as a webinar and as a PowerPoint. So you can explore this in your own time. Thank 
future of product diversity that will be able to keep people employed even when the timber frame market is down. It's both a, a growth of idea and expansion of business, but it also seems to be uh, so focused on Vermont and improving our own economy and really helping to keep the landscape working. And it really does, in the end, have a huge impact on our local economy. I have connections with lots of landowners in this town who want to sell us. We get them to the sawmill. The sawmill cuts that into our specification. And then we produce the finished product out of that. So it's a win-win for everybody. We applied for the Lincoln Lands Grant because we were at a critical juncture in our business where we had great customers and we were able to produce the caramel, but it was really difficult week to week to balance out when the orders came in and when we had product. And we really needed a series of climate controlled spaces that would help us maintain a balance in both the workflow for our employees and the high quality of our products. Working Lands Grant gave us $20,000, which allowed us to leverage an additional 220 on our framework right expansion. And we're really excited about where we are. A really wonderful group of folks that enable us to make what I believe is some really good decisions and really assist growing that working landscape project. The diversity of the working land board, I think, is one of its strengths. Not working land enterprise fund has is, is really provided very effective funding to really increase the value of the, the working land and make that work even better. It is the working landscape that makes this thing special, and these grants and awards help retain that. The Working Land Enterprise Board is a concerted effort and a choice that the state of Vermont has made, and making investment is something that we all will do value. Great. So moving on, history at a glance. The VCRD, Vermont Council on Rural Development, founded and led the Council on the Future of Vermont, which conducted a study, and they basically found that over 97% of Vermonters, 97%, hold on one moment, we are having a technical difficulty, of course, of course, and it's an animated video, so hold on one moment, so. Of all the things, <laughs> of all the things to expect. Okay, <laughs> we're going to carry on. And I hope that I have a little bit of comic relief for this afternoon. We're going back here. So this study uh, found that over 97% of Vermonters valued the working landscape as their number one landscape, and that was higher than any other value expressed by the people of Vermont. So. From that, a partnership was formed, um, and then in 2012, the Working Lands Enterprise Bill passed into legislation. So we have, we now have a Working Lands Enterprise Board and a grant program since 2012. So for stats to date, since August 2012, the Board has awarded over $3.5 million in grant funds to over 130 grantees leveraging an additional um, over $5 million of matching funds. So this will be posted tomorrow. You can see other funded projects right there. Um, to date, we've created over 100 new jobs, and we've seen over $12 million in increase in gross, mil gross income across all working land grantees. So about the initiative, a little bit here, the mission, the vision, I'll read the mission for you. So our mission is to grow the economies, cultures, and communities of Vermont's working landscape. And the board achieves this by making essential catalytic investments in critical leverage points of the Vermont farm and forest economy and facilitating policy development to optimize the ag and forest use of Vermont land. We also have our approach at the bottom there, so access to capital, technical assistance, workforce development, smart policy, value chain and sector collaboration, and public awareness. And these are all factors 
that the board sees as creating progress towards the board's mission and vision. So we've done a lot just over the past year. We've combined two boards into one, so the board started smaller, and now we have even more members on it, um, which they were part of the Vermont Ag and Forest Products Development Board. We approved it, an organizational plan. We've included results-based accountabilities within the application. We'll talk about we'll talk more about those in the future, but those are growth income, um, new jobs measures such as that. We've launched a policy committee. We have done enterprise financing options research, and from that we've created two new loan programs in addition to this grant program where maybe, maybe your matching funds would come from a loan program or maybe you would just be a better fit for a loan program. One is with uh, the Vermont Ag Credit Corporation through VITA, and that is for dairies transitioning to organic. And the second one is through the Vermont Community Loan Fund. And those are no and then turn to low interest loans uh, for working lands businesses. We have a, like a very active forestry committee. Um, and we now have a new position, forestry position, at Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund. And we've com combined, if you've applied in the past or have been following this program, in the past, we've had an enterprise and a capital and infrastructure investment area. Now, we just simply have a business category. So we feel it's a lot simpler for applicants. They go in. It's, there aren't like two different, two, different, um, two different investment areas. It's just one for businesses and one for service providers. We're now also focused on service provider grants that provide direct technical assistance rather than research and development. So this year, for funds available, we have over $650,000, and these are available through the business grants and the service provider grants into Vermont farm, food systems, forestry, and forest product businesses, as well as your technical assistance providers. So a little bit about eligibility, if that's why you're here today thinking, this program is great, uh, definitely need the funds, lots of projects coming coming up, but does my business really fit? So here's, here's a little bit about what those business projects could include. So they might include scaling up, they might include developing new products, new markets, and here are a few examples. Infrastructure projects, marketing and market development projects, research and development for businesses, Grants for land acquisition, that's a tricky one. They definitely are considered, but we really want to make sure that what the, what the funds are going for is paying for something that's in line with market value and it's, the appraisal is done correctly. So we will be asking to see more in terms of um, assessments on the land or the, prop, you know, the property um, in, in, um, in addition to the application. Working capital is also an eligible use of fund. But, and again, this year, something we've done the past two years as well, is there's federal money called the Local Food Market Development Program, and we have $30,000 that instead of running their own program, because it's $30,000 and that's a lot of capacity, we're running that through the Working Lands Program. So as you apply, you'll see a checkbox that says the definition, which is you know, right up here, it's the focus is for Vermont producers to really access those institutional and wholesale markets. And if you think you're a good fit, you can check yes. It in no way puts you at a disadvantage for the Working Lands Funds. It's all one, one you know, it's all together, one big pot and internally will look, maybe you're a better fit for that funding stream um, or, may, or maybe not. So here's the timeline for business applicants. We are now live, those applicant guides for the letters of intent are up on the website on the apply page, you'll find that link right there. They're due November 9th at noon. So no staying up until midnight to submit that LOI, we thought noon would be a better, a better time for everybody.
And that acceptance or denial of your letter of intent will come in late December. Once you get that acceptance, it will come with a link to fill out that full application. So you won't even have access to that full application until you're accepted. Then there will be a little more time. Full applications due February 9th, notification late March, and then project start date in the spring. So timeline for service provider applicants. Uh, if there's any here on the webinar, you'll notice, hey, wait a minute, my guide is not live. That is correct. Your guide will be live on the 17th. However, you have a little bit more time to fill out your letter of intent. So from October 17th, you have until December 2nd at noon. Applicant notification will be in late January. Those full apps are due Tuesday, March 7th. Another application in April late April, that is, and then your project start date will once again be late spring. So very exciting things coming up. You'll notice today we're mostly going to go through the business eligibility. We will um, touch on service providers a little bit. Please note that that is subject to change up in the next week to finalize the service provider letter of intent guide. So applicant eligibility, all applicants must be in compliance with state regulations, all of that good stuff, and they must remain so during their grant period. All businesses must be based in Vermont, and if you're a service provider, you could technically be outside of Vermont, but your services need to be to Vermont businesses. You also must be registered with the Secretary of State at the time of full ask submission. If you're not, it's not a big deal to do so. It's $75 and it goes through um, the Secretary of State website. We can direct you there. Previous recipients of enterprise grants can apply for those larger grants, over $20,000 that demonstrate supply chain impact. Previous recipients of capital and infrastructure grants, those are those larger grants, have to wait three years after the start date of their previous grant. Service providers are a different category. They can apply every year um, with no, no requirements in terms of waiting. So for your business project criteria, you must provide a budget for that uses $5,000 to $50,000 of working lands funds. All projects should demonstrate impact, test a new business model, or display innovation, or address a specific supply chain need. Request over $20,000. Here's the kicker. If you're going to apply for more than $20,000 from Working Lands, you need to show supply chain or industry impact. So it's not only going to impact your business, Maybe you're looking for a piece of equipment that will be shared with four other businesses. Um, so there, there, is, there is that. Budget must show at least a one-to-one -one match. At least 50% of that match must be cash. The rest may be in kind. And these grant agreements, both for business and service provider, are 18 months. We talked a little bit about this before, but those projects may include infrastructure projects, marketing and market development, research and development, land acquisition, and working capital. Service providers are a little bit different. Their ask can be from fifteen to seventy-five thousand dollars. They have to provide one-to-one -one match. So if they ask for fifteen thousand, they need to come up with fifteen thousand. But all of their match can be in kind. So it can be donated time. It doesn't have to be that at least 50% cash. There can be a, a nice healthy mix in there of cash and in kind, but it's up to you as a service provider what works for you. Grant agreements, once again, are 18 months. Nonprofit projects that compete with a for-profit business are ineligible. So we're really trying to find service providers that fit a need that's not being addressed by a for-profit business that's actually helping for-profit businesses and not competing with them. 
and that, T, that these TA projects really need to be direct TA. So we're um, not interested in funding projects that are research that could lead to TA down the road. These are actually for the technical assistance to the businesses themselves. Eligible service provider projects. So it could be scaling up, marketing development, marketing plans, business and financial planning, succession planning, access to capital and financial literacy, manufacturing efficiencies or process flow, developing sector benchmarks, and that's not inclusive. So there's others too, and it would, you know, best thing to do would be to fill out that letter of intent, um, or we'll talk one-on-one -on -one about your project. So scoring criteria, this is specific to businesses. As a service provider, LOI guide hasn't been posted yet. We'll focus there. So these are some things to think about when you're filling out that letter of intent. So the quality of your proposal and concept. Impact and accountability. If you're asking for over $20,000, you need to make sure that supply chain impact is there. Your need. So you need to demonstrate a clear need for the project. Stewardship and sustainability. And I'll let you I'll let you read into the paragraphs yourself and I'll I'll be posting this as a PowerPoint too. And this is in your guide, so all of this stuff can be found in your guide. Leveraging funds that one to one match at least fifty percent cash. And innovation and collaboration. So not all of these need to score high, but these are all the things we're looking at. So we're almost done, and then we'll take questions. So this is just a little intro to Chapter 2. As you can see, we basically cover just eligibility, opening it up for discussion um, for this program. And on Tuesday, we're going to get into a little more depth about the grants management system how to log in, how to create a username and a password, how to navigate the system. It can be a little bit complicated and it's not totally intuitive, although it should be not as bad as you think it is. <laughs> so we like it, we're happy with the system and we hope you are too. So on Tuesday, we'll cover that and we will also cover, in addition to chapter, chapter two in terms of GMS, we're gonna talk about your budget in more depth. So what, what goes in each category, what exactly you need for match, um, what do overhead and indirect costs look like, and, and how you can make it work. So we'll take general questions now. If you want to type them into the chat box, uh, that would be easiest, and then I can read out um, read out the question and the answer. We'll go for you know a few minutes, knowing that it's we're going a little bit over because we started a little bit late. Um, but keep in mind that email's an open invitation, working.lands at vermont.gov. So just shoot us a question and Emma or I will respond back with an answer. And also don't be afraid to set up a time to talk more in depth. So if you don't just have one question but you think you're going to need more than five minutes, maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20, we can definitely set up a time in this coming month to, um, to talk about your project. So at this point, you can chat any questions and I will go through. So one question came in is, are for-profits eligible for the service provider grant? They're not ineligible, but I would definitely invite a little bit more of a discussion from you, maybe one-on-one, -on -one, and we can talk about what exactly your project is, because it could fit, be a better fit for the business category, and it might actually, if it's a service, it might actually uh, capture that supply chain impact piece um, which would be the over 20,000 threshold. So let's 
talk a little bit more about that at a future time. And I'll reach out to you too. I have your email if you registered. You have to be an American citizen to qualify. That's a really interesting question. My guess, you know, my guess is no. But we'll, we will also, I'll get the final, the final answer on that and I'll reach out to you. So here's a specific question about a project, a food waste compost producing operation and a hauling nonprofit should apply for a business grant or a service provider grant. I would say you could technically apply either, but I'd be interested in knowing more about what service you're providing in terms of if these businesses, what they're paying, what, yeah, what, ex what exact service are they getting, um, and just the whole project in terms of is it education or is it really amping up your business? Also, who's, a, who's applying as the lead applicant? So is it the business or is it the service provider? Or the, sorry, the, the nonprofit. So that's something um, to, to think about. You can think about that more. Okay, so this is a question about reimbursement. So it is true that the Working Lands Funds are reimbursement funds. So you actually submit an invoice if, you know, if you're approved for a grant and the grant agreement's signed, you're ready to go. You submit an invoice for what you paid and then you get that reimbursement back. So this question is, say I ask for $10,000 and I show I have $10,000, do I use my own money first? And that answer is yes. Um, Probably 90% of the time that's how it works, but we definitely want to make sure that you can go through your project with no problems and have success and reach your outcome. So if you have any trouble with that, um, I wouldn't be the person to talk to, but as you get to that stage, I actually pass it on to Melissa Moon. So she would work with you and we would just make sure it works out for you and everyone's happy. Can a nonprofit apply? Certainly. And it really, when you think about, can a, you know, can a, is it a nonprofit or a for-profit, think about the purpose, really the purpose of the grant and what those outcomes are and what services you'll be providing. This PowerPoint presentation will be online. I will be posting the PowerPoint as well as the webinar tomorrow. We are, here's another question. We are a bottling co-packer servicing many Vermont-based businesses. Would that be a business or service provider? I would say that's a business. Oh, I have a strong business case right there for that supply chain impact. So that's a good example of your over $20,000 threshold. In obtaining the funds, is financing via the low interest rate loan program a good approach? That's an interesting question. So in the beginning I mentioned we have this low interest loan program that's available for, through Vermont Community Loan Fund. Um, and you'll see that in your guide as well. There's a little bit there and you can go right to their website and learn more. It really depends on the applicant. Every case is different. So if you think you'd be a great fit for that loan um, and you're, you know, maybe you're eligible for another loan first before this, this one. Um, so it really depends, you know, your match. We're not going to look at your match and say, oh, your match is coming from this place and not this place, then you're more eligible or less eligible for working land. Um, that match is matched. So wherever you get it, um, you know, that's, that's, where it's coming from. So that's really a personal decision or a, a business decision that you have to make. How do you show a one-to-one -one match? Well, that is a good question for our next session on Tuesday, which will go over creating your budget. And there's a template that you'll fill out and it will have what you're requesting as well as what your match component will be.
if your business impacts multiple business outside of Vermont, are you still eligible to eligible to apply? You can apply as long as its impact their impact is in Vermont. So that impact that's happening outside of Vermont won't even come into play in terms of this grant. We won't even count that as eligible. So you'd have to prove that there's businesses or your business or whoever is impacting inside of Vermont and then you'd have to show us those outcomes. And yes, the low interest loan can be a match to the grant and any other loan can as well and that would count as cash match. There's one more question here, and then I think we'll sign off. Just going to read through this, and then I will relay it back. So how do we find what you post tomorrow? Great question. If you go to vermontworkinglands.com and then you click on that apply tab on the left, I'm going to post it right there on that main page at the top where it says webinar information. So you'll see the PowerPoint uh, as well as the recording and we will try to delete all of the technical difficulties we had at the beginning so no one will even know if they weren't here live today. Um, I think that is it. And anything I didn't answer, if there's anything specific or detailed, let's be in touch one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you so much, everyone, and thank you for your patience, and best of luck with your project. And for many of you, we will talk again, one-way conversation, on Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Have a great evening.